What's up, everybody? It's your boy Carcino here. Let's get into it. Now, let's speak on... Hmm, what's that? All right. Somebody love to send me something the moment I hit record. I want to thank all y'all for hitting that super thanks button on the replay videos. You guys are amazing for that. Um, much love to you guys for that. Thank you to everybody that uh, hit the like button. Uh, super chat. Doing the super chat. You know, that's, that's incredible. And everybody on my Patreon, salute to you. Thank you. Much love and respect to all of you. As we keep it moving, my subscribers, let's go. Now, Grant Williams. The most time you hear Grant Williams, now you see the NBA player from the Boston Celtics, but there's another Grant Williams who was a studio worker for the Wu-Tang Clan. And back in 97, he was convicted of a murder and spent 23 years in prison. Not many people realize that this happened because the social media wasn't around and the news pretty much didn't pick it up here around the world. I learned about it when he was already incarcerated for years. Uh, Ray, I mean, Ghostface, I think it was on a Ray and Ghost song, they actually mentioned it in some of the lyrics and then in an interview. I remember Ghostface Killer talking about it. But never really heard of it. And knew all the details until like now. Now, I think about two, three years ago is when I start seeing the, I first saw the story that he was getting out or they were re looking into the case. But uh, 23 years ago, he was incarcerated for a murder that he did not commit. That's right. He was innocent. And his case and what he was saying was no one believed him. And not like from the people like Wu-Tang and I mean people he was locked up with. He didn't have the mentality of somebody who had been locked up before. He had the mentality of a man who had lost his freedom but knew he was innocent and he would always tell them, he's like, man, everybody in here say they're innocent, man. He said, no, I'm telling you, one day you're going to see me on the news. And I'm going to be standing there. And they're going to say, that man was innocent. He never gave up. 23 years, knowing what was going on. He said, no, I'm innocent. He was wrongly imprisoned for 23 years for a murder he didn't commit. Now, New York City has to pay that man $7 million for the 23 years he's lost. They saying this will help him get back on his feet. See, both parties had to come to a settlement, but before they had already settled with him for $5 million. Because no amount of money can bring back the years you lose. So even though you get millions to help you get back on your feet, if he wasn't attached to the Wu-Tang Clan by stature, this case <coughs> would have never gotten the attention that it needed to continuously be a thorn in the law. Fortunately for him, he was able to move on. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at this deeper. 
after both parties came to this settlement, right? In 1996, uh, Shadell Lewis was killed outside of a Staten Island public housing complex, right? They said Williams, without a confession, a murder, a weapon, or any significant evidence whatsoever. And there's a witness who explicitly told the police that Mr. Williams was not the shooter. That didn't seem to matter. They had a hat that had a Wu-Tang Clan hat on it. He worked for Wu-Tang, so in their mind, Wu-Tang Clan is responsible, and this links him to the crime. Now, he maintained his innocence through his entire trial. Claimed he was in the studio recording with the Wu-Tang when this happened. Now, in 2017, there was an emergence of new evidence. The state of the Staten Island uh, District Attorney's Conviction Interrog... Inter what's that said? Integrity, okay, they tried to spell integrity and screwed it up. Integrity unit decided to reinvestigate the case. And Williams' alibi was rechecked. Williams said that he was in the studio on the day in question with the Wu-Tang Clan. Prosecutors tried to suggest that a baseball cap with the Wu-Tang logo left at the scene of the crime had connections to Williams. The cap was never DNA tested to solidify such a claim. Plus, Wu-Tang Clan hails from Staten Island, which is true. His lawyer noted that the Staten Islanders were proud to wear Wu-Tang apparel and would don such a cap and wouldn't be the only person over there wearing Wu-Tang apparel in Staten Island. All their paraphernalia, gear, hats, shirts. So there's no telling how many people that might have had those hats on at the time. So Williams were granted parole October 2019 based on that evidence. In July 2021, the Richmond County Supreme Court overturned his conviction. The state of New York recently settled a separate claim with him for $5 million. That was separate from what he got now. So, when he said it's standing outside, that one day you're going to see me on the news and they're going to say I was innocent. And today is that day. He wasn't lying. Now, looking back, looking back at all of these different narratives and notes and all these claims and <sighs> you're looking back at society, right? And you're saying to yourself, where do you fit in? Well, fortunately for this man, he was connected to somebody who had power. He was connected to the Wu-Tang Clan. So by that notion, they could always fight and it can get into some of the newspapers. Even though, even though it was the Wu-Tang, we didn't really hear about this. So this man was really locked up to make it worldwide. But because of modern technology, they're able to go in and reinvestigate some of these murky cases that don't make any sense. Now, for my instance, um, I've noticed there's been a lot of murky dealings and, and, you know, with unsavory characters and people for a long time. 
So this doesn't come as a shock to me. This comes as another, oh well, I'm glad another brother got something he's supposed to get, but this hurts the taxpayers. So now the people have to pay for the public service that they're supposed to be getting from the police officers. This come at their expense. So for poor service, just so they can get a conviction, they grab the wrong man, lock up the wrong man, <clears throat> without rhyme or reason. And if that happened then, imagine how many more are out there. Imagine how many more we got to deal with. So, I'm glad it was overturned, but what was more alarming is the lack of investigating that took place. With lack of evidence, they was able to lock that man up for 23 years. 23 years of his life was taken away from his family as his mom was crying. She's basically weak in the courtroom just from all the worrying and stress and crying that her child was locked up and he was innocent. So imagine the man who actually did the crime. For 23 years, he knows someone else was taking the rap for his murder. He don't care. They ain't got him. And that's all that matters. Now, when we look at scenarios, when we look at what everything means to a person, we got to start looking about the value of life because the value of life moves very fast and very swift <clears throat> life is precious so before you take it think are you taking it to defend yourself or what have you I heard a heart-wrenching story of a man who basically didn't want to take a life, was defending his home, actually shot the perpetrator, but didn't want to take his life. But the person hadn't dropped his weapon. He laying on the ground checking where he was hit. And instead of, you know, continuously overshooting because he didn't want to do that, he waits, he gets on the phone, he's calling 911. That person turns around and puts three into the homeowner's body, killing him on the spot instantly. So the robber survives with non-life-threatening wound to the stomach while this guy was shot in the back three times that took his life, the homeowner. So, yeah, that person's in jail now, but the homeowner who, who actually shot him, who was trying to call 911 and was shot in the back, lost his life because he was trying to, to not take the life of the intruder. That's the game we play, right?
We want a perfect world. We want a beautiful world, but we don't know about how to get there. We say we want these things, but the actions that we take don't dictate that. We say we hate bullies and we hate we hate people attacking innocent people for no reason. But yet and still we find a way to attack them on social media. and bully the bullies. So if you bully the bullies, does that make you a bully? Sounds like it to me. The Johnny Demp Amber Heard trial. What does that teach you? We don't like that Amber Heard lied. We feel that she did lie. I felt that she lied to try to ruin Johnny and went to the extreme that she did and defame him. I also feel that his celebrity is power. <clears throat> and no matter how you may feel about it, She can't win because her public perception of anything she's done, she's ruined in the business. This Aquaman 2 thing will be the last thing she probably do for a long time. Then on top of it, on top of all of it, To make it even more interesting to the general public. Everyone's attacking her. On social media. Everywhere she walks. They're booing her. People are harassing her. Everywhere she goes. Now is that right? So we keep saying we want a better society, but we're acting no better than the people that's actually doing the things that we disagree with. If someone apologized for their actions, who are we to be above the forgiveness? Because if you have no forgiveness in your heart, you suffer even a greater, a greater pain in your life. I can forgive people. I just don't forget it. If people really want to apologize or they really mean it, I can forgive them. Sometimes I forget people immediately when they do something. I forgive their actions. Because sometimes they know not what they do. Or they blinded. Because they're confused. Blinded by the propaganda and the lies that they tell from all the programming here in this western region. This is what I this is what I fight against. This is what I'm always up against in the world. This is what I'm always engaging in. Change, a difference, doing something that involves meaning. That's what I'm about. If my life ended today, so what? I did something, I died doing something different or trying to make a difference or a meaning on this planet. 
That's more than to me than making money. That means more to me than that. If anybody can understand that. Okay. So now that that's been said. It's your boy Carcino. God bless. I'm out.